Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today it's about how we can do Ableton Live stuff in Bitwig Studio part 3000. Today it's about, um, yeah, recording your microphone and then uh, convert this into MIDI notes to trigger some random samples. Here someone did this in Ableton Live. So he does some beatboxing and then he triggers the kick, snare and the hi-hat on some drum sampler. And he wrote, I got beatboxing to work in stock, stock Ableton. It's super unstable, but I got one good take. So he probably recorded this uh, 1500 times. Of course, it's, it's really hard, as you can see um, soon, uh, to separate each of these different sounds. We have to do a lot of filtering. And I think the native the native plugin here called Voclia or so. I, I don't know what's what's the right name is. Um, they did this with AI to separate basically kick sounds from snare sounds from your mouth. So they use some recognition there, not just simple filtering. But you you get very far with some bandpass filtering, high pass filtering. I want to show you this. And I see it's already uh, downloaded here and no idea why. Uh, but yeah, th that's your usual Bitwig Studio question you get or I get all the time how you can do the same stuff in Bitwig Studio that people do in Able Life. But that's how it is, right? So here we go. So I show you this here. Uh, I give you a rough idea how to approach this in Bitwig Studio. Um, so I have already here an XO sampler. It's just a VST device. You can also use a drum rack or a drum machine, whatever you want to use. Um, um, I use here just a VST with a kick snare or a rim shot and the hi-hat sample and we want to trigger this now with the um the microphone so i would use in this case here a note grid you can use whatever you want you can also use a pulley uh pulley grid if you want to and we just uh, scrap that because we have no note inputs and we have here some note output so i use a trigger and I want to trigger here the, the kick drum, which is on C1. So we do this. This is the this is the kick drum. Whoops. Um, that's this 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 the snare here, D1. And we want to use here the hi hat. So that's the easy part, right? Um, so now we want to use the microphone input. So we use a hardware device, hardware in. Can select here the microphone you can see also the level here already and we probably want to use an oscilloscope so we get here some information about the uh, audio input so the first problem we have to tackle is that we have uh maybe fluctuating level here which is not really nice uh, but you can work with that you can increase the volume or the, the amplifier uh, on your uh, audio sound card, but we can also implement something like an auto leveler, like I showed you in some of my recent videos. So we need a divide here and we need um, a follower. So we follow the audio input here, ease the rise and the fall and divide or use this to divide this durch, uh, through the audio, uh, with the audio signal. And we get here some kind of amplified signal. Um, the only problem now is that we also amplify pretty quiet signals like the noise floor. You can see it's getting slowly louder. Um, right, so we have noise then that's get amplified and you want it to, you don't want to have this, you want to have some kind of threshold in there. Yeah, so, so we implement your small little threshold for the noise floor. And we need a sustainer hold here. So we want to sustain the the level here. When let's get the logic here. Um, this one and the constant. So this is basically our threshold here, right? And to pull this down to maybe, I don't know, 0 0.10. So every time the level goes below this 
uh, white line, this threshold, every time the level goes below that, we want to hold the last known level. So we do this here with this, right? So every time this follower goes below this level, um, it sends out basically a trigger. Something like this. Every time we go above this, we have no trigger. And when we go below this level, we have a trigger, right? So this means um, every time we go with the vocals above the threshold, it uses the values from the vocals to define the volume. And every time we don't speak, so the volume goes below the threshold, we use the last known level and just hold that with the level sustainer here, okay? So this is basically our small little um, auto-leveler kind of tool device, and we can use this now as an input. I can't beatbox, I have to tell you that, right? But I can give you some, some rough ideas. Um, so you can change at the threshold to, to your kind of level, to your level of your microphone and, you know, get some stuff in there. Um, what we also can do is maybe already filter the input with a low pass and a high pass. Um, to get some plops out. Something like this, maybe everything that's below 40 hertz just to get the rumble and, you know, all that stuff out we, we don't need. And maybe everything above 10K, I, I have no idea. So we have already some pre-filtering here happening. So now we need to uh, separate the sounds. So the kick, kick, you know, that stuff. And we want to use probably cell key. Cell key filter here in the grid is pretty nice because you get pretty steep filters here, 24 dB per octave, band pass, low pass, and high pass. So pretty steep, pretty clean. So perfectly nice for that. We want to also remove here the pre-code for the pitch so we don't change the frequency when we hit accidentally the keyboard. And we want to probably use your LP8. So we filter out everything that's below um, 150. I don't know. You have to tweak this to your voice. Um, that's that's the main takeaway here. Oscilloscope. So we can see what's going on here with that. Um, so, so now output when we want to trigger the hi-hats, that's, that's good. So we get uh, the kick drum still there. Uh, we can also use, uh, to make this even steeper, uh, we can use two of them. Um, something like this. Okay, nice. And then we want to use a follower, probably. Get uh, some kind of signal. And then we want to um, let's move this over here. And then we want to implement some kind of uh, threshold. That's threshold constant. So every time we surpass zero to ten, we want to trigger something. And we do this here. Logic bigger than. This is bigger than that, right? So we get the signal out here. So that's basically the kick drum for you. Um, let's put this over here. So you can play around here with the fall time to get the right amount and the constant, you know. So you have to tweak this to your voice. Also here with the filters, if, if your uh, kick drum sounds from your mouth are way deeper or, or way higher, 
of course you have you can tweak this here right so you have to tweak this to your voice uh so that's the kick drum then we go here to the middle part which is the snare drum so here we probably want to use some bandpass filtering um ep8 so we get no signal at all which is very nice because we are at 150 uh, hertz here maybe go higher or maybe let's go and use a spectrum here we have to make a lot of analyzing here you can see so we are at 2.5k um and here we use the same thing. so we have no signal there nice maybe too, too steep maybe let's go to four so we get something there um so it's a it's a lot of tweaking that's basically what he's he said with this um with this line here i got beatboxing to work and stock stock album but it's super unstable it's it's a lot of work to find the right the, the right sweet spot So that's ki kind of works. And here we do the same for the high pass. High pass 8. Everything that's above 2k. We get a lot of strong signal here. A lot of strong signals. Nice. Okay, so it kind of works it's not perfect right so you have to play around with the frequencies as i said um but there's also something you can do to make this a bit better you can bring in some logic stuff so sometimes when you do a sound here like so you trick out the kick and the snare and the hi-hat at the same time uh, because you make such a variety of frequencies with your mouth so you can bring in a bit of logic you can say um, logic uh, and um, and not. So every time you trigger the the snare drum, um, or you want to trigger the kick drum, you you. You don't, or you, you can only trigger the kick drum when the snare drum is not, not triggered, right? So um, you basically exclude this. So when you make make this kind of sound, but at the same time, the um, this filter picks up some kind of noise below the threshold. It doesn't get triggered because you already trigger the snare. So you can exclude certain combinations, right? So you can play around with this kind of logic stuff. So it kind of works. Um, it's not perfect, but it's something you can work with, right? And you can also see here, you can do a lot of logic stuff with this here also. You can say then, of course, um, um, only trigger only trigger this the hi hat here when the snare is not triggered. Okay, so maybe you introduce your gate length um, to that. So you make the gate at least a certain amount long. Uh, it kind of works works nice actually for the first try <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah use selling key filters they are pretty great pretty clean um use logic to exclude certain combinations of of triggers and um yeah that's 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 basically my my main tip from that um another idea could be to um quantize this so we can use a quantizer, use this quantizer in trigger mode. We'll put this in here.
and then um, you see a triggers and go to 16 nodes. So now all your triggers are basically on the grid. Um, let me see when I use here an instrument track and I want to record the input of the node grid here, right? I can't beatbox, guys. Um, so in here you can see it's um, where is it? Oh yeah, it's it's uh, it's absolutely not on the grid, but you get the idea. Um, you get the idea. It kind of works. I put the, the the preset here in the description below so you can download it and can start from this if you are too lazy to replicate this in the grid. Um, maybe I use uh, this is, yeah. Walk to MIDI uh, drums. I don't know how to call this, but I put this in the description below um, to get you started. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Leave a like if you found this helpful. Um, subscribe to the channel to get more of these kind of Ableton Live, um, how to do Ableton Live stuff in Bitwig videos <laughs> uh, in the future. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.